Are you wondering how to create a Gantt chart in PowerPoint? Well, if so, you've clicked on the right video because I'm going to be showing you step by step how you can build your Gantt chart as easily, as quickly and as simply as possible. So what I've done here is I've created a new slide. Obviously, it's a blank canvas and that's what you're going to have in front of you here. So what you're going to want to do and what I recommend doing is using the table functionality. Now to get there, you click the insert button on the ribbon in the table here. So the second option, click that and I'm going to use the insert table button here. Of course, you can use this grid to kind of specify how many rows and columns you like, but I actually just think the insert table option is a little bit easier. And I know this is a rough estimate, but I know for the particular Gantt chart I'm using, um, and, and, and showing you how to build here. It has around 13 columns and nine rows. Now that may change depending on how far into the future you want your Gantt chart to show. This is gonna be for the first quarter of the year. Um, so just bear that in mind, um, but we can expand that out later and I'll show you how to do that. So based on the template of the PowerPoint I'm using, uh, we've got some kind of formatting already in place and I just need to remove that. What we need here is a blank, plain table. So under table design, I'm just going to put some borders in. So I'm going to go all borders and I need to remove all this green because we, we could use it, but I don't think it's going to be very beneficial and user friendly. So I've left click in the top left cell. Oh, I don't want to do that. And I'm now dragging all the way down to the bottom right, just to select all of the table, clicking home and then I'm going to remove the fill, so no fill. So there we go, we have a you know a, a, uh, a blank table and I'm just gonna move this into the center for now and I'm actually just gonna make it a little bit bigger. We can you know readjust as we go along, but that's obviously a, a good thing to do just to make it a little bit bigger. Now, what I would recommend doing is in the second column along, second row, we want to start putting in the weeks of the year. Now, this is going to be, um, for each quarter. So we're going to need basically three, uh, four, sorry, four weeks, um, four weeks and a quarter. So we need to basically specify them all out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to control C. So I selected all of that and control V, 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 control V. Now I'm sure you've probably got a, a better way of, of doing this than I, or a quicker way, but you, you're getting the idea of what I want to do here. So we need a, you know, four weeks for each quarter. So that should be two, this should be three, and that should be four. Now I'm going to highlight over all of this, a bit big, isn't it? So I'm gonna basically reduce the size. So it's in font size 18 at the moment. I'm gonna put this into 12 and I'm gonna center it. And then I'm going to, so I've, I've reduced it using this button here. It's very useful, decrease font size. And I've used this button here to, to center it. Now I'm going to, with it selected, so with this cell selected, I'm going to click Format Painter, left click over the next cell and drag across, and that should give us all of our weeks. So next up, what we want to do is split out the quarters. So as you can imagine, the first four weeks are going to be January or Q1. So I'm selecting all of the cells here. What we want to do is merge and center them. So select the first four cells, as you can see, right click, and we want to merge. Let's call this January. And that's, we can't see that because it's in white at the moment. So I'm going to put that into the middle. And as you can imagine, next up we'll do the same. So select the next four cells, right click, merge cells, February, I think I probably spelled that wrong. Oh no, I might be okay. February, yeah, that's right. Put that in the middle as well. And lastly, we have Q3. As you can imagine, the same process. So that's a right click and merge cells. And then we're gonna put March. Make sure that this is in black and put this here. Now you can also do some fill here. That also kind of differentiates it out. Quite like doing that. So I'm gonna put in a, let's put in, yeah, that's quite nice. Let's put that in for here. We could put in a kind of a lighter, uh, red here and then finally let's go for yeah let's go for a coral that looks quite nice and let's put this in bold as well actually because that'll just differentiate it out quite nicely
Now, next up, we need to basically put in our different phases. So I'm a Prince2 certified project manager. So for the purpose and, uh, of illustration and for this demo, I'm going to use the, you know, the common um, processes in Prince2 um, just to get, so you get the idea. But at, this could be any phase of your project. So just bear that in mind. You know, um, for instance, if I'm going with the Prince2, as I said, this would be things like uh, starting a project. So as you can see, this, you know, is a little bit, uh, we need to kind of make this a little bit wider, this, this column. Uh, so I'm going to select all of the cells in this column. I'm going to click the layout button and we just want to make this width basically a little bit bigger. So as you can see, um, this would give us a little bit of flexibility in terms of our text and make sure that we can get all of our uh, tasks or phases, sorry, let's just say phases in here. So let's fill out the rest of the Prince 2 phases just for your reference. So here we would have something like initiating a project, if I can spell. Um, next, oh, I've scrolled up by mistake. Next, we're going to go to directing a project. Let's say we're going to manage a stage boundary here. I'm trying to remember all of the different prints to processes. Um, I haven't done these in a while. And then let's go. We've got managing a stage boundary. We've got some. We've got controlling. Uh, that's also another prints too. We have managing product uh, product delivery. I believe is another one. Managing product delivery. And then last last but not least, we have closing the project. So as I say, these are the different uh, phases in your project. So this could be anything like, you know, um, implement in, anything to do with your implementation. It could be with, you know, delivery, et cetera, of a product. You get the idea. So we're going to put this all in the same kind of size. Let's put this as 12 for now. And I'm also going to bold. And actually, no, I'm not going to bold. Um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to, I want these to have a nice color. So we're going to do a shape fill. We will do kind of like a gentle gray. Uh, yeah, like a gentle gray. Okay. So as you'll see, I'm just going to, what I'm going to do here is I want to move this actually. So I've selected all of the cells and we're looking for that little, uh, kind of four phase digit thing. And there we go. So this is starting to take shape. Now, what we need to do is we need to add our activities to our, to our Gantt chart. So in order to do that, we are going to use shapes. So if I go insert or the, the click the insert button on the ribbon at the top and you will see shapes. So select that. Now you can use various different shapes. The one I like to use for a Gantt chart specifically is the arrow pentagon. So this is when you would essentially start mapping the different activities. So let's say this is going to be activity one. It's going to take place in week one and two. Uh, we're going to start the project in week one and two, I should say. Um, so that would be here. Now, we are quite like that green, um, but what I would essentially be doing here when creating my Gantt chart is I would, when it comes to the shape color, so you want to use for all of your activities the same shape, but when you have different, you know, different activities, so that would be in starting the project, what you want to do is basically change color. So what I'm going to do here is change the, the fill to, um, we need something a little bit different, don't we? Uh, I'll put this as a red. And so you get the idea, but what you essentially want to be doing here is differentiating between your activities. You know, this could be a different team handling the activity as well. So it just gives that visual, you know, anyone who kind of comes in here and, and, uh, and, and opens up this Gantt chart will know exactly who's in charge of what. And I'll show you something. We're going to do something in a minute as well that will kind of give you some, some further insight into um, how you can differentiate between these activities. So I'm going to add one more in here. We're going to do, you know, let's just jump down to controlling. That's going to happen between February and March. So this is going to go between two, you know, two, two different months. Um, it is within the same quarter, but uh, we're going to change the shape fill here to, we'll do a nice blue. Now, that's that. Perhaps one thing I haven't mentioned so far, which I think is a, is a good thing to do, is I'm going to put a, a text box in just at the top. And I'm actually just going to say, you know, Gantt, I always spell Gantt wrong, Gantt chart for project A. But you get the idea. I can't spell project either. What what you want to do here is, you know, specify the, the project you're working on. So anyone who opens this up, any stakeholder knows exactly what project you're referencing. So this would be the project name here. So I'll put project A. This could be, you know, um, app launch. 
you get the idea. It's just, you want to make this clear what this is Gantt chart is specifically relating to. So get that in there as well. Now, another thing you can do is, so these are activities. So what I should probably have done here is I'm gonna add some text. So I've right clicked and edit. So I'm gonna call this activity A. Spelling is atrocious today. What is going on here? Select all of that, bring this down. I'm gonna do a control C. I'm gonna right click on this other activity. Edit text. I don't know what happened there. That's the alt text, we don't want that. Right click. Oh, I clicked that by mistake. Edit text, control V. Bring this down. What is going on here? This is going to be activity B, and you probably could have guessed what the next one's going to be, and that's going to be activity, oh, I spelled something right for once, activity C, and I'm going to make that a little bit smaller, oh, I moved that, so just be careful, you can see what I did there, I actually moved the activity, the date a little bit, um, because I've, you know, fumbled fingers there, um, but you get the idea, so that's activity C. Now, these are the activities. What you'll also want to, to put on your Gantt chart are um, milestones and you can use icons for that. So a good one off the top of my head would be something like a flag or something like, you know, anything to, to, to give attention to the milestone. So um, if I actually just type in flag, it might come up. It does. So you could use, I'm going to use you can use this one or this one, I'll use this one for instance. So all that needs to be is, you know, this is a milestone. So this could be, you know, milestone, you know, this needs to be when the report of activity A needs to be produced in week three. Um, you could stick that here. Um, you know, it could it could actually be in between. So th this could be, you know, like a, um, this could be another boundary that goes in between different um, phases or, or parts of your project as well. So they're, they're your milestones. Now the last thing I would recommend doing is I would add a key to your Gantt chart just so for anyone coming in here they know exactly what all of the different icons or whatever refer to or who's in charge so I would go insert or when I say in charge who's responsible for such activity or milestone for instance so I want to click insert text box and I'm just going to do that here now I'm going to put key and let's bold and underline that and underneath So I've used the enter button there to, to, to get that space. Now what I would do here is I would just do a control C, control B, control C, control B, control C, control V. So we've got all these down here. They're obviously in different sizes, um, depending on, you know, you might want them exactly the same size. Uh, depends. Uh, I mean, I would recommend that, but that's, you know, it's being quite pedantic at this stage. So here you could put, let's say, team A. So team A is in charge of that. So that could be, you know, I put team. It might even be an individual. It could be, you know, the project manager is in charge of, of, of starting the project, let's say, in this, in this example. Um, activity B is, you know, the initiation. That will probably be the project manager as well. But, you know, let's use an example like managing product delivery. Let's just say that's the product team. Let's move that. I've just moved that down here because that wouldn't make sense in controlling. But let's say this is the product team. So, you know, that's a good reference point. You could call this a key or a reference. Uh, you could do something like that just for, for any, any stakeholder coming in here to get a better understanding of what everything means. And of course, we can't forget our milestone. That looks a little bit crazy. So that could be something like, um, uh, I'm going to edit, where is it? Uh, I don't think it's got an edit button, but what you would basically do here is insert uh, a text box and I'm just going to go uh, milestone and I'll just make that a little bit smaller and place it alongside 12 and just put that there like that. Just so you know, it gives everyone an idea of, of, of what it is, you know, what that, that logo or icon actually is. So that really is, in essence, how to build a Gantt chart. You're essentially building a table and then you're, you're plotting the different activities depending on when it is in the, in the calendar or when it's scheduled for. As you can see, this is a Q1 Gantt chart only. So this is just the first three months of the year. Of course, you could make this, you can make this a little bit smaller and you could add future quarters and you could just add, you know, my April as, you know, move on from the next three months or if you're a project manager you could you know you could you could create your gantt charts via the different quarters so you know you might come in here at the end of q1 and and update it for q2 
obviously save as save as new um, and then you but you then have a, a collection by the end of the year of four different Gantt charts that, that map out your year and you've got kind of that reference point looking back but that is essentially how to create a Gantt chart. I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, please do hit the like button. That tells me, you know, I should continue creating videos like this and that they are valuable to everyone watching. Um, and if you do find this video particularly useful, then do subscribe to my channel um, and hit the kind of uh, bell button as well. And then you'll be alerted of when I release new videos like this. So with that being said, I hope you have an excellent day.